First, our favourite ABC ideologue, Paul Barry. The man paid $200,000 a year by you to push his green left views on climate change, display his Trump derangement syndrome and carry on his crusade against News Corporation. As you know, on this program, I've highlighted how his show Media Watch has misled the public on drought and climate change and given deliberately just one side of the ongoing debate about the use of hydroxychloroquine, a long-standing anti-malarial drug also used for lupus and rheumatoid arthritis, and whether it can be useful in the fight against coronavirus. On this program and in columns, I've detailed what Barry has got wrong, what he's deliberately left out, and what he's hidden from audiences. And I've offered him a chance to come on this program and discuss these issues. Does he respond with facts, arguments and intelligent debate? No, he just avoids the issues and he tweets that it's Groundhog Day because I'm attacking his program again. And as he knows, this just invites a vile and abusive pile-on from his hard-left followers on Twitter. Yet he pretends to be interested in lifting the tone of debate. He's been at it again today, having failed repeatedly to tell his audiences about studies claiming success with hydroxychloroquine and having failed to tell them about reputable trials underway with the drug in Australia, he once again has seized on a report dismissing the drug. One side of the story only for Barry when it comes to this. This is not media scrutiny. This is anti-journalism. I hope the drug works. I hope any drug works. Barry clearly wants this one to fail for the idiotic reason that Donald Trump has promoted it. But have a look at how he tweeted on this last night. He exhorts me and all the other idiots harassing him on Twitter about the COVID wonder drug to be convinced by this story. Why would a taxpayer-funded journalist who's supposed to encourage intelligent media debate refer to me publicly as an idiot? Why would he infer I harass him on Twitter when I'm not there? And why would he suggest I promote a wonder drug when all we do is report studies and interview experts? Is Barry feeling the heat? Does $200,000 for 15 minutes of television a week leave him with too much time on his hands? We've had a look at his focus on Media Watch over this year. Talk about Groundhog Day. By our reckoning, of Media Watch's 26 shows this year, 24 have included attacks on News Corp. That's some strike rate. When we looked at negative references on his show, Barry's quibbles with the ABC made up just 5% of his criticism. The vast nine media organisation encompassing mainstream television and radio, along with left of centre newspapers, drew just under 20% of his fire. Most of it for the TV and radio, of course, not the green left former Fairfax newspapers. And yes, News Corp attacks, including this station, made up by far the largest slice of Barry's attacks, drawing near enough to half of his criticism. And he was at it again today. Hi, Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Bites. And just in on Sky. Brett Sutton, the Chief Medical Officer, has stood down. Oh, my God. More trouble in Victoria. There has been tension between you, Brett Sutton, and the Premier now for several days. No wonder it's shot through, but... Hold on. Update. I've just had a text message from Daniel Andrews' office. It says, Sutton has confirmed it's not true. Whoops! Turns out Brett Sutton was just on leave. Better luck next time. Yeah, fair enough. Hit. Uh, we do a lot of breaking news on this station. That was an incorrect report that was quickly corrected. Compare that to Barry's failure to scrutinise how the entire ABC, hundreds of journalists acting like a school of fish, all got the last federal election wrong, all picked the US election wrong, all failed to pick the direction of climate policy in this country or got border protection issues wrong en masse for a decade. What about the ABC's crusade against George Pell, against live cattle exports, against the greyhound industry? Why doesn't Barry ever get off Twitter and present some findings about why everyone at the ABC seems to think the same and make the same mistakes? Is there anyone at the ABC doing anything to make sure taxpayers get value out of Paul Barry? Let's bring in our panel now. Columnist for The Spectator Australia, Rebecca Weiser, and columnist and blogger for The Daily Telegraph, Tim Blair. Great to see you both again. Uh, Tim, does Paul Barry and Media Watch exist to demonise News Corp or do they have a higher purpose in life? 
I think they see it as a higher purpose. Uh, that is that is their role. But, man, I could do with that Paul Barry's little comedy pieces that he knocks up during the week with all the boing and the whoops. And, like, man, some people aren't funny. Paul, you are one of those people. Just play it straight. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you can't tell a joke. You can't present funny gear. That's all right. You don't have to. Just stick, stick within your limits, which means, you know, going after the Telegraph, News Corp in general, Sky and so on. It's all your audience expects from you, and it's evidently all Paul Barry can do. Seems to be a rule to himself, Rebecca. Yeah, I'm absolutely staggered by the way he seems to walk through life with one eye shut. I mean, the level of bias in the coverage at the ABC that is simply not seen or reported on by Paul Barry makes a mockery of him calling himself Media Watch. He should call himself Murdoch Watch. Let's face it, that's all he ever seems to do. Spot on.